Hey y'all, so you'll have to ignore my parents. Um, I love being able to work for myself and be my own boss when I can choose my own hours and literally make videos for you guys in my robe um, while my kids are still asleep. Now that's not to say that they're not going to come in here and interrupt in just a minute, but I want to talk to you guys about follow-up verbiage um, a little bit. Now I've never really made a video on this. I'm very passionate about follow-up, but I've never really made a video on this because I can't really give you the words to say to your customers because it's not going to be authentic. Um, and also, I can't tell you how to be a good person and be a friend to someone. So what I have to say today is going to be a reflection of me and how I talk to my customers when I follow up with them. It's not to mean that it's going to work for you, but I just want to give you an idea of what you can kind of do. So I really feel like the biggest downfall in a consultant's business is that they do not have a follow-up plan. Um, and since I utilized my own follow-up system five years ago this month, um, I started in February, but I backtracked to January of 2017. So it's been five solid years of doing a consistent system with follow-up. And yes, I have changed my system several times over the last five years, at least four times. Um, because my system in that season of life wasn't working. So that, that's something you always want to be doing is reflecting our leader spotlight. Um, Gretchen Zock had just mentioned in her leader interview the other day that one of the biggest things she does is she reflects, not just every year. Like I always tell people to reflect on the year so you can start your brand new year with your goals and dreams ready to go. But also she reflects every month, what went well, what didn't go well, what sold well, what didn't sell well, what she did and in her business that worked well, what didn't work well. And so that's something you want to do too with your, with your follow-up system. If you feel like you've got this um, binder or this tracker, a piece of paper, or even this app or online system that you're using for following up with your customers and you're not utilizing it, like you're not opening it up at least once a week, then that's a system that's failing you. And you're failing that system, to be quite honest. It's not working. So you're going to have to reflect and figure out what in this season right now is going to work for you. So the thing about a follow-up system and in this business I, the number one thing that people come to me about consultants come to me about needing help with whenever I offer it is um, how can I build my customer base how can I get more PRV how can I get more sales how can I get more customers that's always their number one thing but when I sit down and coach with that person one-on-one -on -one, I immediately discover they don't have a follow-up system okay and I harp on this and I preach on this because to me it is the number one downfall to a consultant's business is they don't have a follow-up system. So why is a follow-up system so freaking important to your business? Number one, you sell a consumable product, so you need to be checking in on it. Number two, we're in the business of also, we sell Sensi, yes, but we're also in the business of building relationships. Some of my best friendships have come from people I've met in Sensi, not just on my team, but my customers who've actually become friends, not just because they support me and buy from me, but because... Because of that, I've had a chance to get to know them, and we realized that we had a lot in common outside of Scentsy. So let me just <clears throat> say this. Selling Scentsy, being a Scentsy consultant, is not just about the sale. Being a Scentsy consultant is about the connection, the sale, building the relationship, building the relationship some more, building it a little bit more so that your customers will refer you so you can go back to a ref referral from their friend to connecting, selling, building the relationship, okay? It's not just about who can I see today, who can I meet today, who can, who can I throw Scentsy at today. That's not what this is about, and if you think that that's what this is about, then that's where you need to start is your mindset. Okay, you've got to change it. We are here to connect with people if we can. And you're not going to connect with everybody. I have people out there who bought from a Scentsy party before. So it started with the sale. They bought from a Scentsy party. And I tried really hard to connect with them and build the relationship with them. And for whatever reason, they didn't reciprocate. And that's okay. But you know what? I still have a job. You still spent money with me. I'm still going to check in to make sure you're, I'm going to check in to thank you. I'm going to check in to make sure that your order was delivered. I'm going to check in to make sure that you've opened it. I'm going to check in to make sure you're enjoying it. And if you don't respond to any of those check-ins for me, that is a-okay. I'm doing my part. I'm doing my business. Okay. So Let's get talking about some of the verbiage. And again, I cannot tell you how to be a good friend. I cannot tell you how to be a good person. I cannot tell you how to be a good consultant. I'm just telling you what I do and what works in my business. Every single follow-up I have with customers, new, old, past, present, future, whatever, any 
kind of connection and any kind of follow-up that I do, any touch point, we'll call it a touch point, that I do with these customers who've purchased from me, I have to look at who it is because I am not going to say something to a consult or not a consultant, a, a, a customer who has been supporting me for five years now. I'm not going to say the same thing to her who supports me every other month, every three months, religiously for five years. I'm not going to say the same thing to her that I say to a brand new customer. So first and foremost is you have to know who you're talking to. You have to know your relationship, your connection with that person before you can even start typing on your phone, before you can call them, however it is that you want to communicate with them. Most of my follow-up connection is done through a written message of some sort, whether it's a text or an email. Okay, And again, that's going to depend on how I know the person. So that aside, first of all, you have to know who you're talking to. Secondly, you um, then you decide how you're going to talk to them. So this is how my follow-up system works. I do the 113 method. So if you can go on um, any search engine, but uh, YouTube would be awesome. Type in Sensi follow-up system, Sensi 113 method. Um, it is one week, one month, and three months. The way that I do that is it's from delivery. So I touch base with them one week from delivery, one month from delivery, three months from delivery. Okay. Now, Whenever anyone orders from me, whether it is an online order, especially an online order, um, an order they give me through a basket party, a home party, um, they just call me on the phone or text me or send me a message and say they need to order, um, I immediately thank them. So let's just go with like PWS order. If it's a PWS order, within 24 hours of getting that email, I don't care if they ordered on a Sunday, I don't work on Sundays, but by Monday morning, they're going to get a text message from me within reasonable hours. Technically for me, I do not message my customers um, unless it's between the hours of 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. And again, I know my customers. So if I have a customer who lives in Texas, messaging them at 8 a.m. is 7, 7 a.m. their time. So they may not even be awake for work yet. So I'm not going to message them then. I'm going to wait until maybe lunchtime, my time, to, to message them. Again, if, you have a, if you're living in North Carolina and you've got a customer in California, you need to know that if you message them at 8 a.m., it's 5 a.m. their time. They might not be happy that you've messaged them. Now, hopefully, most reasonable adults have a do not disturb feature on their phone that they utilize, but some people don't. So I'm not going to wake somebody up at 5 a.m. to be asking them about their sense of you, okay? So know your customers. All right. So first and foremost, I'm going to thank them. I will typically do this through text message because if they ordered online, I have their cell phone number when I go into their workstation. If you choose to email them, that's totally up to you. I'm going to text them first because, again, that is opening up a door of communication with them and it is a form of connection okay and so again I'm, I'm looking i'm looking to connect with them because you can't build a relationship with somebody if you're not connecting with them so i want to try to connect with them plus i want them to have my contact information in case they ever need to reach me so i'm gonna i'm gonna this is a pws order so i'm gonna send them a message and i'm gonna say hey Susie joe this is katie johnson with Sensi. i just wanted to reach out and say thank you so much for your online order um, I hope that you enjoy everything. I just want you to know that your tracking information is going to come to the email that you provided with your Sensi order, um, and that should be coming very soon. Again, thank you so much for your support of my business. Take care. I've left it so that they don't have to respond. If they want to respond, great. If they don't want to respond, fine. I did my part. Okay? So, um, a lot of times if it's a brand new customer, they may not respond immediately. Some people are going to say, okay, thanks. That's fine. Just leave it at that. Okay, now one week from delivery. So I have to keep an, an eye on my um, order tab in my history of my workstation. So if you're a pen and paper type of person, that's fine. But you're going to have to access your order history so that you can keep up with dates and times of things. Okay, so this is why I suggest you have at least, at least, I try to do two, but you at least need to do one day a week your follow up. Take 30 minutes, an hour, 15 minutes, whatever you can do. Follow-up Friday is a great idea. Find some time where you're sitting down and you're just doing follow-up that point of your business for that day. And you're going to pull up your order history and you're going to see if orders have shipped. Whatever system you have, whether it's your phone, whether it's an Excel spreadsheet on your computer, whether it's a piece of paper, notebook, a binder system, <clears throat> a tracking log, whatever. But you're going to keep up with your people and if it's shipped and delivered and whatever. So you pull up your order history, you open up Susie Joe's order, you see, okay, it was delivered two days ago. 
So now I'm going to reach back out. I've already thanked her now. This is my second touch point. This is my one week. So the thank you is not included in my follow-up system. My follow-up system is from the date of delivery. Thank you has to be done, regardless, no exception. Thank you has to be done, okay? The minimum thank you that you should do for your customer is thanking them through text message or email immediately within 24 hours of getting their message and after, or their uh, order. Now, this is another point I want to make really quickly. To me personally, sending happy mail, sending a thank you in the mail is a, not a part of my follow-up system. That's not a follow-up for me. Sending a scent of the month um, thing to them because I have a whole system for my scent of the month, it, that is, is part of a follow-up, but their initial thank you, thank you for ordering for me, thank you for spending your money with me and my family, is not part of my um, follow-up system. An immediate thank you text message is not part of my follow-up system, but it is a non-negotiable. Okay, so one week from, from delivery. So their order was delivered two days ago. You can choose to follow up with them now, or you can wait for an entire week. Um, all right, let's, let's backtrack. Let me start over. Let me, make, let me make this coincide with my system. So you check the order history. It was delivered last Friday. Today's Friday. Okay. So I'm going to follow up with Susie Jo and say, and you can do this through email or text message. If you didn't get a response from their, from your thank you through text message, um, you could choose another alternate route through email or if you're friends on social media. However you want to connect with them, contact them however you're comfortable, you choose. Again, again know your person. So I reach out to Susie Joe and I say, hey, Susie Joe, it's Katie again with Cincy. I just, I see that your order was delivered last Friday, just making sure that it arrived safe and sound. That's it. Again, it's still checking in with them, but it's leaving the ball in their court. If they respond, great. If they don't, you've done your job. Okay. So write this down if you don't write anything else down. Detach yourself from their response. Don't get so emotionally connected in whether they responded or whether they ghosted you that you get paralysis and decide you're not going to follow up with anybody anymore. Don't do that to yourself. That is not helpful. Okay. So that's why I always leave my verbiage in a way that the ball's in their court. I did my part. Now, if they choose to respond to me, great. If they don't, that's fine. Okay. One month from their delivery. So in whatever system I'm using, whatever tracker I'm using, I need to write down their order date, but I also need to write down their delivery date. Delivery date is important to me because I want to know exactly when it was delivered. Remember, we have 10 business days from the time they ordered for um, Sensi to even ship it out. And then so two more days. So we're looking at literally like two weeks before an order should arrive to someone after it's been ordered. Now we know typically since he's a lot faster than that, but let's just go worst case scenario, okay? So one month from their delivery, so they delivered on that Friday. So one month from that delivery, I'm going to reach back out to Susie Jo again, knowing her, knowing our relationship, knowing how we communicate will depend on whether it's text, email, social media. Okay. I will reach back out to her and say, Hey, Susie Jo, it's been about a month since you got your order. I just wanted to see how you were enjoying your lunar washer whiffs and your alabaster mini warmer. Can't wait to hear what you think. Okay. I specifically mentioned something that she ordered so that she knows that it's not a generic follow-up. I have personally used the Sale with Amy app and I have pre-made um, messages, templates, message templates in there that I will send to people that I don't know, that I don't have a relationship with yet. But my customer who's been shopping with, her, with me for the last five years, I'm not going to send her that generic message because she'll know how fake that is. People know you. They will know when you are blowing hot air at them, okay? They will know when this is not you talking, when it's an automated machine. Like, they're not dumb, okay? So, I mean, how many times does a, a, a 800 number call you and you answer it and the first thing they say is, Hi, this is Susie from the car warranty. And it's a recording that's made to sound like an actual person, but you know that it's fake. Your customers know the same thing about you, okay? So I'm not going to message a customer of five years and be like, and send them the message template that I have that sounds very professional, very business-like, they're going to know that that's not me. So I'm going to reach out to them a little bit differently, okay? So if someone that I don't really know that well, um, again, I'm leaving the ball in their court for them to message me back. Now, yes, I did ask them a question, but, you know, I did my job. I'm checking in on their consumable product to make sure they're happy with it. Um, and they don't have to respond if they don't want to, okay? So at the three-month mark from delivery, so let's say they ordered the first, the first Friday in February. So that would be Mar February to March, March to April, April to May. February to March is one month, March to April, April to May. So three months, okay? So in May, I would reach out to them and, and say, 
hey, how are you doing? It's been a couple months since you've um, ordered your whatever. You can list things or not list things. It's totally up to you that they ordered and say, and just wanted to check in and see how you liked it. If you need any Scentsy at any time, here is my contact information. Feel free to message me, or you can always shop my website at any time that's convenient for you. It's open 24-7, and I would leave them my website or leave them a direct party link if I wanted to, okay? That's up to you. Again, know your person, know how you're, how you're going to talk to them. Now, my rule of thumb, and not a, people are, a lot of people are not going to agree with this, but my rule of thumb is if they have not shopped for me in one solid year, so February 2021 to February 2022, if they have not shopped for me, then either I, that tells me something. Either they have another consultant or they're not using Scentsy at all, okay? I may do one more check-in with them in that year um, and just see how life is going, ask them if they have any issues with their warmer or any other Scentsy products. Um, if they got a warmer, I may throw them a little... Um, Free, a freebie out there to let them know, not literal freebie, but just information freebie to say, um, did you know that Scentsy Warmers have a lifetime warranty that any consultant can um, check out for you? If you have any issues um, with your warmer, any manufacturer's defect issues with your warmer, um, please reach out to me. I'll be glad to get it taken care of for you. That's all I'll say to them, okay? But again, this information, what you say to your person is going to depend on your order history. What did they order? What do you know about that person? What's your relationship with that person? So this is why I have never really given a or done a video on um, exactly what to say to your customers in your follow-up because I can't, I can't tell you exactly what it's going to look like for each person. I mean, my cousin, when I follow up with him, I'm not going to be like, hi, um, Joe, this is Katie with Scentsy. He knows who I am. It's my cousin. <laughs> so I'm going to be like, Joe, what did you think of that Blue Grotto um, pod pack? And he's going to be like, I loved it. It's great. And I'm like, awesome. Next time you need some more, holler at me. We got some bundle and saves. I can get you some for cheaper. Get you, The more you buy, the cheaper it is. You know, something like that. I mean, I'm not going to, you know, you just have to know your people. Another thing, another point I want to make is that um, if, you're working on your, and you should be, working on your relationship with your customer. Um, you, don't always have, you don't always have to check in with them about Sensi. So maybe at the three-month mark, you check in with them about their life. So if I'm friends with them on social media, I, I will go check their social media. Maybe I haven't heard from them in three months at all. Maybe they haven't replied back to me. But we have a pretty decent friendship, like a friendship that they would at least be like, hey, how are you doing? When I say, hey, how are you doing? <laughs> Great, how are you? You know, that kind of thing. And they haven't responded to me in you know the last couple of months. Maybe I reach out to them and check their social media first and see if there's anything big going on in their life. If they haven't posted anything in three months, maybe there is something significant going on in their life. Maybe they are taking a break from social media. I don't know. Maybe I would text them instead of Facebook messaging them and say, hey, just checking in with you. I was, I had you on my mind. I was just thinking about you. I hope all is well. That's it. That's not a lie. You had them on your mind. Whether you were prompted by the app on your phone or your tracking log to, to reach out to them, they don't need to know that. But you can check in with them when it doesn't have anything to do with Scentsy, and that's A-OK -okay too, okay? So I'm not sure if this is going to help anybody with their follow-up system. I do know, number one, you have to have a follow-up system if you want a successful Scentsy business. You sell a consumer product. You're not out here selling purses and clothes and shoes and things that earrings and jewelry where you wouldn't necessarily check up with them consistently. You might would check in one time and would thank them and then check up with them one time just to see how they're liking it. You sell a consumable product. A consumable product means you use it and you have to refill it. So you need to be there for them. I don't know how many times I have to say this. And I know some of you are like, that's not true. Customers call me all the time. Great. You're, you're an exception to the rule. Generally, people are not going to contact you when they need new Scentsy. They're just not. Life is busy. Life is crazy. They're just going to be scrolling social media one night and be like, oh, she's having a 10 bar special. Or, oh, she's... um. My girlfriend from college is having a Scentsy party. I'm going to shop from her. Okay? They're going to go wherever it is convenient for them. So you, with a follow-up system, need to make it convenient for them to choose you. Okay? That's why a follow-up system is so important to the success of your business. Listen, I can't tell you what to do with your business, but I can tell you that if you're looking for it to be successful, if you're looking to have customers, if you're looking to build your customer base, you need to take care of the customers you currently have and not expect that they're going to shop from you one time and keep coming back to you when you don't do anything for them. They did something for you and you're not doing anything for them, they're not going to come back to you. You need to connect, sell, 
build the relationship, continue building the relationship so they'll refer you and then you can go back into that cycle with that person. Connect, sell, build the relationship. I hope that makes sense. If you have any questions, let me know. Have a great day.